Welcome to the second advanced skiing tutorial in Blender. Today we will explore different skiing. Now what is different skiing? The name already suggests it. You have two images, like for example here, my friend Maurice in front of the green screen and one image of the empty green screen that we will subtract. Well, almost empty because there is a shadow of Maurice here on the side, which makes things a slightly bit more complex but more interesting. So let's jump in and explain how we done it. So I've gone ahead and brought in the footage. We have our foreground plate and our background plate. Ideally you shoot a background plate without the shadow in it. <laughs> but this demonstrates another little workflow that may be useful. If you don't have that, you're done very, very quickly. So if you ever take a green screen shot, be sure to make a couple of frames, don't need to be a lot, of your empty green screen. This goes in the bottom, your uh, subtractive frame and your foreground frame goes in the top. We'll connect the two. Let's bring this completely down. And the way I work is I start by raising the tolerance. And well, we're pretty much there. And this is that annoying shadow that we talked about. We raise the fall off and it's not gone. We can raise the tolerance a bit higher. Boom. Well, as you can see, we've introduced a bit of a gap. Now, this is a fun little workflow that I came up with. We'll take the mat, we'll take the RGB value. Greater than, we see we have those gaps. If we lower this, we start to fill in those gaps. We have this color that we selected. We may have been a bit too aggressive in the tolerance, so let's lower it, bring the fall off up. There we go. Can we raise this? As you can see, this would have been the key. Uh, sorry, let's do it right. Let's show you what the key would have been. This would have been the key. And we're going to basically clamp it. So we bring in an RGB node and we tell them if it's greater than that, show it. But basically we are reducing the opacity of the mass because now it's this grayish value. Which isn't a problem because we're working on a black and white image. It's a matte after all, so we can bring in a curves and start to clip that to white again. Basically filling it in. We can do a nice little blur of the edges. I always start a bit big. We can always dial them down and erode the mat. Here we have one little pixel we could mask out or cheat the fuck out of it and move this up. And just move this up a bit further. So now we have a mat, now we apply this workflow that we demonstrated in the core and edge mat and please check that tutorial out because you can apply the edges uh, workflow step here as well. You can add those soft edges on top if you need them. So the key thing that I'm trying to do with these tutorials is hand you tool sets, workflows that you can combine like Lego bricks. So we're going to do the RGBA separate because I want to bring in the alpha of our math so we can have a pre-multiplied uh, image that we can just comp over anything with an alpha over. And the RGB combine. So the RG and B remain the same. You never ever ever want to use the result that Akir gives you. Because there could be a lot of processing on there. You want to be in control of that processing. We bring in the alpha. 
we'll bring in the alpha over and some color spill because we definitely will have some color spill so that is our standard workflow we'll take that image into the bottom which is still a weird thing as i want to basically composite this over the background that is so confusing to me perhaps that's my mind and then we have to convert it to pre-multiplied and boom we're done we can even, because it's a bit soft on the edges, uh, I could lower the blur down, of course. That would help. But we could also add what we've done in the Edge and Cormat, the advanced uh, tutorial number one. Use a dilate and erode, and always be gentle on your masks. And just reduce it by one pixel, and boom. You can do a little light wrap on there. Maybe a second one. That looks nice. Yeah. We blurred it out a lot, so we have some real estate to play along with. And especially with slower motions, this will really be a very quick key. And it's usually very uh, robust as well. But what really makes it uh, hit home, and this is a workflow that you can use in a lot of different mats, is this greater than uh, operation. So you lower a value and you basically say, keep everything that is greater than this. So if there are some white pixels that are less uh, white than your mat, then they will be clipped out. But you are left with, well, potentially something that is slightly uh, more gray than this value because everything greater than this will remain and you can just clip that mask with uh, with a curves adjustment in the highlights make them opaque and that is how you solve some of these weird nasty little holes in uh, core mats as well so once again also check out the first advanced keying tutorial so that you know how to make a core mat. This could actually be a great core mat method as well. And how to make an edge mat and how to add them together with a screen operation. That is also a very useful technique for those difficult uh, non-one-click key operations. If you want to have, however, a one-click key operation, just shoot in ProRes 444, ProRes HQ, or even better, in RAW. Avoid this compressed XAVCD or AVCHD crap, because it's the compression that makes it really difficult. The more data you have to key with, the easier it is. Especially with different skiers, uh, that will really help a lot. So Here's another uh, tool for you in your toolbox for green screening and visual effects comping. And I hope to see you in the next quick tip. Cheers.